violence against women is one of the major problems uh, in, in Africa, uh, in developing countries. And Uganda is one of those countries where violence against women is very high. Traditionally, it is widely accepted uh, to do violence against women, but this is not okay. Look at FDM, female genital mutilation. Our people in Sadei, Pokot, are practicing it, they are circumcising their girls in the name of culture. The court had to come out and say, this is how harmful it is, it is of no medical benefit, it should be outlawed. The root cause of this violence against women is embedded in the gender inequality and it's about the power and control aspect. Society has been raised to have those gender differences where the male have been privileged to have more power than the females, and that is where the whole beat of the violence happens. Coupled with that is the whole normalization and acceptance of all these forms of violence. So it is important for WHO as well to work with other sectors uh, to increase awareness. We do have a number of partners now working in this area. UNFPA, UNICEF, UN Women, uh, WHO, UNAIDS. But you also see that the government sectors themselves, the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Gender, the Ministry of Finance, they come together to institute a sectoral working group that addresses gender-based violence. We work with the police, that is the Ministry of Internal Affairs. We work with the legal fraternity. We have a mandate to handle cases and crimes arising out of sexual gender-based violence. The Penal Code Act has uh, several sections pertaining to sexual gender-based violence. Rape, defilement, incest, anything to do with insulting the modest of women or sexual assaults, we handle. 20 years ago, violence against women was not a topic that would be discussed in the public sphere. Initially, it was a private affair. It was a domestic affair. Nobody wanted to talk about it. Awareness creation is one of the first things that WHO has contributed to. This has, therefore, enabled the ministry to respond by ensuring that the policy guidance, the health sector development plan, the training materials are also put in place. And the WHO has offered both financial and technical support to the Ministry of Health and Partners to put this in the health sector response. So WHO helped us to get rape kits that are up country, we have distributed them. They will also bought microscopes for the up country hospitals, uh, photoscopes for some of the regional hospitals. All this was to uh, enable the health workers carry out good diagnosis. The office also developed um, a manual, a police manual for UPF. It has uh, three you know, uh, components. We've worked along with uh, UNFPA and with UNICEF. Um, it's a training manual uh, for the police on you know, basic human rights you know, concepts, uh, gender-based violence, and on child protection. Uh, we see many cases of domestic violence that range from over 7,000 and 8,000 per year. And that is just a quarter of those who report the cases according to the research and the surveys that we are doing as police and also the other uh, uh, partners who are doing that kind of work in domestic violence. The change in attitude and provision of services at stations where we are actually are trying to put, at least most stations try to have uh, different uh, desks to handle gender-based violence. These are particular desks that are now handling gender-based violence, which wasn't the case before things started to build up as a, uh, an issue. We have also established what we call gender-based violence safety centers in a number of districts, 
We have them in um, the northeastern part of the country, in Moroto. We have them in northern Uganda, in Lira and Gulu, and in western Uganda at Mbarara. We also have centers in Masaka. Another area of our work that um, I think if we should emphasize a little bit of um, as UNFPA and our colleagues within the UN system is the provision of uh, what we call the GBV shelters. What it means is that um, it's a kind of a refuge, a place of where people can come in and they'll be protected from where they have uh, experienced violence at home or sexual violence, defilement, or where a woman has been beaten by the husband and there's nowhere for her to go to. We have gone ahead to review our police form 3 for victims of gender-based violence. This form can now be filled by nurses and clinical officers who have been trained in documenting the right required information that is necessary for litigation purposes. However, in doing this work, there are challenges that come with it. Of course, dealing with discrimination, dealing with challenges of violence against women is a big issue. It is an issue that you're dealing with patriarchy, you're dealing with issues of challenging power, you're dealing with the issues of uh, resource allocation, you're dealing with attitudinal change, so there are enormous challenges we continue to face. One of the biggest challenges that the country has is the infrastructure needs for standard management of the survivors of gender-based violence. In terms of the confidentiality, the privacy, the equipment required, the lab reagents, and the skills. So the health systems blocks, really, which need to be put together to respond appropriately to the survivor, are not readily available. There are low staffing levels in the hospitals where we operate, and so this becomes a challenge, especially like in Mulago. Our clinic is situated on an emergency ward, and so you find like maybe one staff is on the ward and then she has like three mothers who need emergency attention and then a survival of sexual violence also comes. So you find that the client will have to wait for some time and of course the staffing is not in our control as a program and this is not a decision of one person maybe to increase on the staffing levels. The other challenge we face is the late coming or reporting of the survivors and mainly I think it's because the communities are not sensitized so well and also the stigma part of it associated to sexual violence and the fact that also communities condone sexual violence when it happens people don't know that there are services available they don't know it's a crime to report then there are families involved they don't want to bring conflicts at home within the families so in most cases these people either do not report at all or they report late There is no problem in the Ministry of Health to cater for management of collection of forensic evidence. And because of this, these services have been offered in a haphazard way. As we know violence against women and girls is a phenomenon that is experienced globally. And it's a pandemic that is not exclusive to one culture or to a country and so forth. So it's a global phenomenon. And I think one of the most important things that we've seen is that the lack of data and analysis on the, the, the violence in terms of its epidemic and so forth. So we want to be partnering with the um, with WHO and others in, in getting better data and analysis in terms of collection of, of, of data, whether it's looking at it from the entire sectors. Uh, the implementation of laws is still a challenge. Um, why legal reform? Uh, processes are affected by delays in adopting laws. We have gone a long way by having the laws in place. Implementation continues to be slow. Resource allocation in terms of ensuring that these laws are actualized and they're helping our people and the institutions that are charged with the implementation in terms of delivering service have the capacity, the ability and resource is still very limited. We also see government appreciating the need to deal with violence against women and GPV because it affects national development. It's not just beating a woman or raping a woman, defiling a woman 
or it could be the reverse, even beating a man. It is a health issue, it is a development issue, it is an economic issue. And unless we address these issues holistically, we won't be achieving some of the basic goals we've set ourselves, both at national but also at international level. So work has begun, but a lot more needs to be done. And a lot more resources are being mobilized by both the World Health Organization and other sister UN bodies to make sure that this work is scaled up in the country.